The ERO study is about a new uh, GnRH antagonist, which is called Relugolix, which has the particularity of being an oral compound. Okay, so uh, there are no oral, orally available uh, drug to induce androgen deprivation. We have anti-androgen or six like that, but today, if you want to um, apply androgen deprivation therapy, you still have either to do a surgical castration or to use long depot formulation who are working very well, but have the inconvenience that it takes a long time to recover. Hedegolix, it's an oral antagonist. So in contrast to uh, agonist, which are the most use formulation, luprolide, triptorelin or other, it in directly induce uh, castration. So it directly lower testosterone at a very low uh, level, actually. And uh, it, there's also another advantage that we highlighted in the clinical trial is that in patients with uh, previous cardiovascular history, so patient who had a myocardial infarction or something like this, we don't see a we don't see a surge of new cardiovascular event like it is seen in, I would say, roughly 20% of uh, the patient with a NHRH agonist. So that's the really good uh, There have been a lot of questions uh, about that and especially about the ability of uh, Relugolix to really induce profound castration. So historically, the definition of castration was to reach a, a, a testosterone of less than 50 nanogram per deciliter. Uh, 10 years ago, some work were done and highlighted the fact that it's very important to lower testosterone to less than 20 nanogram per deciliter. So this is called profound castration or optimal castration. And there's been at least one publication based on a very large intermittent androgen deprivation therapy that showed that reaching low uh, castration level less than 20 nanogram per deciliter was associated with benefit in overall survival. So here we have reviewed the result of the ERO trial in terms of what is the proportion of patient reaching a profound castration defined as a testosterone less than 20 nanogram. And if you look, for instance, at day 15, it is 78% of the patient receiving uh, Relugolix versus one person of the patient receiving the agonist. And if you look at day 29, uh, which is a time that the agonist should have worked, it's 95.3% for Relugolix versus 56.9% for Luprolite. So the difference is very significant. Then we look when you look for... Uh, much longer duration uh, of time. And you look, for instance, at the rate of sustained profound castration at 48 weeks, it is 81.6% for Relugolix versus 68.6% .6 in Luprolite. So that's a difference of roughly 13%. So we uh, initially showed that Relugolix oral compound can achieve kind of standard castration level of 50 nanogram equally, if not better than uh, Luprolite. What we show here is that if you look at sustained profound castration, so less than 20 nanogram per ml, which is a value associated with clinical benefit in at least one study, then Relugolix is superior with difference at any time point after 28 day, which is above 10 person. So we believe that this is a very significant result and should uh, encourage uh, people to use Relugolix. I would say in three condition. Uh, the first, and I believe the most important is when profound castration Rapid profound castration is important. The second is patient with an history of cardiovascular disease. And the third, which is a request made by many patients in situation where hormone therapy is given for a fixed duration of time and recovery of testosterone is something important.